The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples made their way through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men and women, and they will put him to death. And three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they didn't understand what he said and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? They said nothing because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. So he sat down, called the twelve to him and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms round him and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. It's quite confronting for us to know this, but child protection laws are unbelievably recent in human history. The first child protection law, to my knowledge, is 1861 in England, where the English government said children under 12 could not be sent down the mines to work. That's the first law that we know about that legislated a child's rights. This is confronting, given how passionate and rightly so we are about children's rights these days. In Jesus' day, a child could be sent out to slavery, could be sold, could be put to death, and there was no recourse before the law. That's why the bar mitzvah and the bat mitzvah, for boys and girls, matters so much in the Jewish community because then you got human adult rights, legal rights. So here's Jesus placing the most vulnerable, the most exposed person in their society saying, if you want to be great in my kingdom, be vulnerable. Be a person who has no rights, who claims nothing. Well, if ever I needed a modern example of what that might look like in our day and age, I turned to Pope Francis. He walks, he, he walks the talk. He's a Jesuit and so am I, and I find him continually challenging. Because in November of the year that he was, in fact, uh, elected, Pope Francis was doing his normal uh, Angelus on Wednesday, and then he got in the Pope Mobile and he started going around the crowd, as he always does. As you may know, he doesn't use a Pope Mobile that has any glass in it. He says if he's assassinated, he's assassinated. So he tries to be as close to the people as he can. No one told him that that day, on the 18th of November 2013, there was going to be a person who had gone to incredible trouble to come from Milano, from Milan to Rome, to be there. His name was Vincenzo Riva. Vincenzo Riva suffers from neurofibromatosis. It's the elephant man disease. If you haven't seen that great 1981 film, don't say this homily didn't give you something practical this weekend. Go home and watch it all over again. He, he suffers from neurofibromatosis. He's had it all his life. And he came down because he wanted to meet the Pope because he took as his confirmation name Francesco, Francis. So he wanted to meet the Pope that took the name of Francis. The Pope has the ability to see the vulnerable, to see the most at risk person. So without any knowledge that he was there, he saw him. He told the driver of the Pope Mobile to stop. And look what happens next.
He hugged him. He kissed him. He touched him. <coughs> he prayed with him. He loved him. That's Francesco's mother, Rita, behind him. And we'll go back one. Uh, thank you. And uh, that's his mother uh, standing behind him. She's in tears at this stage because she realized at that moment that neurofibromatosis gives you these terrible lesions which weep. He stinks to high heaven. There's no deodorant, no aftershave, nothing that can mask the terrible smell that he emits. And as a result, Rita told Italian television two nights later that she realized at the moment when the Pope was hugging and kissing her son that there were only two people that had ever hugged or kissed uh, this man. Vincenzo had only been hugged and kissed by her and her husband, his father. And he was the Pope hugging him and kissing him and loving him. If you want to be great in the kingdom of God, Hug Vincenzo. In fact, what happens next is extraordinary. The Pope said he's never talked about this, ever. They've talked about it endlessly. He said to them, would you like to come and have lunch with me? It was just before lunch in Rome that day, at the midday Angelus, of course. And so within an hour, they're sitting at the Pope's table for lunch. And during lunch, the Pope said to them, is there anything that I can do for you? Is there anything you need that I may be able to help you with? And Vincenzo said, Holy Father, we have been unable to get a flat on the ground floor of any new housing commission place in Milan. And we're on the ninth floor. It has no lift. And my mother's 83 and I'm 52. And it's very difficult for both of us to get in and out of the building. We've applied now for nine years and we've never been able to successfully secure a new place to live. Vincenzo and Rita tell the story that the Pope got up walked over to the phone in that dining room and rang the Prime Minister of Italy. It's good to have contacts, isn't it? And within three weeks, they were in their brand new housing commission flat on the ground floor of the area in which they live. Now, some people would say, well, bully for them. They got the Pope to do their bidding. Well, yes. But it's always better to do something for someone than nothing for anyone. Sometimes we get immobilized because there's so many needs in the world and we end up looking after no one but ourselves. Welcome to Following Christ, where this week, let's find our Vincenzo. Let's find the vulnerable, the weak, the poor, the marginalized, the one who stinks to high heaven. And let's be great in the kingdom of God by doing whatever we can in love.